guys. <sighs> How many days have we been in the lockdown? Uh, anyway, let's go through the comments again, alright? <laughs> in, in a way, I enjoy this process. In, in another way, it is also a bit oh, oh, tiring. Anyway, uh, the first one, Mr. Mahendra. I'm considering a 2015 E300 Blue Tech Hybrid. Your comment, please. Uh, this car is extremely fuel efficient. Hi guys, if you've always thinking that if you want to stay in a very good township, one that is developed beautifully, but then you must spend at least 700, 800, 900,000, 1 million to stay there, there is something very, very exciting coming up. You don't have to give up your current lifestyle and you still can stay in a wonderful township. All right? To know more, register at dudok.my. D-U-D-U-K dot my. All right? Go register yourself and understand more this exciting concept coming from a very, very well-known developer. Cheers. Extremely fuel efficient. Um... I haven't heard much issues with it. Maybe Mercedes was really good at satisfying their owners. But there is one thing whereby back then, all the owners of E300 Blue Tech Hybrids actually grouped up and pressured Mercedes-Benz to alter their suspensions because that kind of sporty suspension that they have, they keep scraping uh, on speed bumps. So, uh, do get your car checked whether it has been replaced with um, the newer suspension or the original suspension, the non-spot suspension that Mercedes-Benz had for this car, uh, just to make sure, alright? Uh, it, it was an issue. Uh, a lot of them scraped their cars. And uh, check the undercarriage. If everything is alright, it's, it's a wonderful car. Is it, This is the... Just to double check. <laughs> no, I think I'm right. <clears throat> 2015, yeah, that's the facelift. Uh, E300 Blue Tech Hybrid. So shit tons of it, Mercedes Benz. Alright, second comment, Mr. Safiru. Uh, Bobby, the AMD Thread Ripper, blah 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 blah, is for workstations. Uh, just do a small research before choosing. Ah, that was my video on the desktop. It's just for fun, because <laughs> I get so many people telling me that, hey, desktops are cheaper. I'm like, okay, now I'm going to try and see how far I can max out desktops. So I max out the laptop at 17, 18, 17,000. <laughs> I never thought a desktop can max out at 78,000. So I'm just having fun, all right, Mr. Safiro? Just just having fun. Uh. Okay, uh, quick one. Hi, Bobby. I asked this car buying question, but it didn't get answered so i'm asking here again blah 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 looking to get a used car 220,000 250,000 plus minus blah 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 2018 bmw x3 or a 2018 cx9 uh, da, 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 da. he has sufficient experience with bmws he has owned audis benz vws and all that one of my left field choices is the 630i GT, but it's a bit out of my budget. <sighs> if you can squeeze yourself for the 630i GT, I think that will be a brilliant car. By the way, I didn't consider the XC90 because the current second-hand value is not worth... Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, the XC90 second hand value is pretty good, so that it's not a not as worth buying as a used car as compared to the others. Um, the 630i GT is is a brilliant car, and uh, I see a lot of dealers have their pre reg units being listed 320, 330. Mind you, this car brand new is 460. Yeah? and uh, he mentioned his budget is about 250k plus minus. 10%. So can I add a 10% for you? 250,000, 10%, 275,000. 275,000, let's say you found a 630i GT, 320k, maybe you nego another 10k off. That would be 35,000 more than your budget. 35,000 more than your budget. 
you want to keep the car for five to seven years, that would be monthly five hundred ringgit. Five hundred ringgit per day. <laughs> you know where I'm going here. I'm trying to cycle you. Uh, if it is five hundred ringgit per month, per day should be somewhere about seventeen ringgit. Let's say you are driving a BMW X3. Okay. No, 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 no. Let's say you are driving a six series GT. Okay, and then someone come up to you and say, "Bro, why don't I pay you seventeen ringgit per day?" And we swap cars. I, s I gave you my X3, you give me my 6 Series GT, and I'll pay you 17 ringgit per day. Have I managed to persuade you to go for the 6 Series GT? Go for that one. Lah. This is a fantastic car. And uh, from the way you ask your questions, I don't think you need the 7-seater option of the CX-9. Right? So, uh, for another 17 ringgit per day, why don't you get the 6 Series, you know, it's so spacious, so comfortable, beautiful, and when you go up to a certain speed, I don't know what's the speed, the rear wing will come up, oh, and you get a button to, to press the rear wing, like, when someone allows you to merge in front of them, you can use your wing to say, thank you, alright, uh, Mr. CK, go for the 6 Series GT, uh, you'll be happy with your purchase, you will be happy with your purchase, all right. And uh, let's say if it is thirty five thousand away from the other cars that you are looking at, I can assure you, seven years down the road, yours will be worth more than the the few others that you have listed here because it's a higher range product, right? It's a it's a six series product with within BMW's uh, product range. So please go for that one, all right. <laughs> um, really hope to get an RX-8 It's been my school time Dream car Yeah, go ahead bro, Mr. Wing Y uh, The new Gen Sonata are nice But don't know Sam W will be bringing it on uh, Yeah, I'm not sure as well Because uh, Hyundai is doing very poorly in Malaysia And um, The new Sonata The new Sonata was like Wow And then one week later you're like oh, just too aggressive styling. Okay, the next one, Mr. Brian. Hi, Bobby. I'm convinced to get a Caldina GT4. I prefer the facelift one. Oh, yes. Is it a great handling car? It is. The Caldina came from the Celica GT4. The Celica GT4 is a rally bred, you know, sports car. Go for the Caldina. Lovely car. Hi, Bobby. Toyota Innova or Voxy? Uh, I would assume you're talking about the new one, right? I was amazed with the Innova. It was. It used to be one of the most hated car by motoring journalists because it's like a leather frame derived MPV, blah 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 blah, right? But this, this the way Toyota updated the current one. I dare you, you go and test drive an Innova. Yes, it still has that look, that, that, that tall riding look. I tell you, this car is so quiet, so comfortable, so slow. <laughs> yeah, the engine is like, it's, it's at its best. Lah, huh? it's, it's, like, it's like, this is as, as much I can take. you know. But the car is so well finished inside. The dashboard is so good looking. And... Um, it's so comfortable. I don't think the Toyota Voxy has the same kind of soundproofing as the, the current Innova that we have. Why? Because the Voxy is a JDM car. It is a grey import car, right? And Japanese, for some reason, Japanese aren't as anal as Malaysians when it comes to soundproofing, road noise and all that. Probably because we drive a lot faster, first thing. Second thing would be the Japanese roads are a lot smoother. That's my opinion. Uh -huh. So, uh, of course, the Voxy is a proper MPV with sliding doors, the boxy look, 
and uh, it looks less utilitarian. Wait, it looks more utilitarian, but it's fit for purpose compared to an Innova that looks a bit weird because it's leather frame and it has an MPV body, but there's no sliding doors, just normal doors. Uh, but I can guarantee you it will be more comfortable in the Innova. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, Bobby. My mom is looking for a car to enjoy. Her budget is about 100000 to 150000 She's a single mom with two, which is you and maybe your brother or sister. Uh, she's driving a 2011 Vios. She wants a car but doesn't know what to get. She's turning 51 and I'd like her to enjoy her pre-retirement time. Perfect. Your budget is perfect to get a 4 Series convertible or a previous generation E-Class convertible. These two cars are 4-seaters, first of all. They are 4-seaters. They are comfortable and uh, they're powerful enough. The previous E-Class is 1.8 CGI and the 4 Series is, it can be a 420i or a 428i, 2 liter turbo. Both cars are comfortable, are nice to drive, they look good and most importantly, um, I think your mom would really, really enjoy it. Uh, sometimes Sunday morning, you know, open it up and you guys can join her, go for breakfast or during the evening times, um, go McDonald's, buy Sunday ice cream or something like that. You guys would really, really enjoy the car. Uh, she would be happy to see the skies, to to enjoy something that that I think I think she would appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, just tell her that it's not about showing off. First week, it will feel very, very awkward. If you've never driven uh, a convertible, the first few times when you open your top, you will feel very weird. You'll be thinking everybody's looking at you. Um, which, uh, yeah, people people tend to look at each other, but when you are in your cocoon, you feel more comfortable. So if you feel less comfortable, you can roll your windows up so that uh, there is some form of barrier there. But after a while, she will get used to it. And uh, it is the best experience she can ever have. Last year's Enduro, a lady which, which is about the age of your mum, actually bought a convertible and joined us for the drive all the way to Phuket. She loved it. She is about that age and, uh, you know, you've lived your life, you are, you are comfortable financially and she also just wanted something to have fun that she don't dare or she couldn't buy when she was younger. Alright, get, the, the, get these convertibles, they are fantastic. Alright. Hi Bobby, is the new X4 worth buying? Yes, get it. It's beautiful, man. The new X4. Hi, Bobby. Thanks for your response, and I managed to persuade my wife in buying a second-hand car. Um, which are better for me? A 2015 Tiguan or a 2017 Tiguan? Mm, you really want your SUVs. Is the MK1 more reliable than the MK2? Uh, by the way, currently I'm driving a Persona. My budget is about 90000 and I'm the only one working in the family. Mr. Mustakin. Now, hmm, if I'm not wrong, your budget. So you show me a 2015 MK1 Tiguan and a 2017 MK2 Tiguan. Alright. I'm guessing. Okay, got it. Um, one year older than your MK1 Tiguan. Wait, 2014 BMW X3. It will be more reliable than, than the two Volkswagens that you mentioned. It will be less trouble. Of course, the 2017 one is newer, but it's also three years old already. Uh, I think you enjoy more in the X3. It's larger. Uh, it's also just as comfortable, it has iDrive, and um, yeah, I think I think it will cost you less to 
to run the car. Of course, the 2017 one is still under warranty. Um, but um, maybe Volkswagen has improved their after sales service. I'm not sure. I'm not a Volkswagen owner. But these generation BMWs are generally they don't they don't cost you a lot to run to be honest they they, they just run like they are all right find one that is low mileage I'm looking at one that's forty five thousand mileage eighty nine thousand ringgit uh, you can nego it and um, if the dealer don't accept your dis your the discount that you're asking for just walk away there are quite a few out there all right get the X three it is a uh, yeah. It is a higher grade product, and um, it's it will be. I mean, historically the records. Let's say the eight speed ZF. Eight speed ZF is bulletproof. I mean, they don't they don't give you issues, right? And um, these modern beamers, they they just they just run. They just run, right? Yeah. All right. Get the X three. It will be a better choice than. The both both the tig ones that you mentioned, don't don't for a second think that hey this car used to cost three hundred thousand, this one used to cost one hundred sixty thousand, uh, that one will be more expensive to maintain. It doesn't work that way, right? That's that's not how it works. Car makers rarely sell cars because of their cost from manufacturing. You know, you look at a seven series, how much longer it is than a five series? Half a foot. Half a foot more of metal, half a foot more of pl uh, of carpets. What else? Same engine, same gearbox, same button, same wiper motor, same same alternator. Everything is the same. Same seats, same motors, same wheel hubs. Right. Okay. Hi, Bobby. Um, Mr. Ambrose. CLS three fifty or Audi A seven. Now this is a uh, more sophisticated answer to tell you now the CLS 350 is beautiful all right there's nothing wrong with it it drives well it's comfortable it's beautiful but but the a7 has its better package what I mean better package is that it's a 3 liter supercharged engine all right compared to a 3.5 naturally aspirated engine one Rotex is two thousand ringgit, another is four thousand ringgit, and the A seven is more powerful. The A seven has a larger cabin, larger boot. Um, in terms of looks and design, I think both are beautiful, and uh, the A seven is just better. Uh, every component that makes a car good. Okay, it's not just the design, right? Uh, you have the comfort, the infotainment, the engine, the response, blah, blah, and everything. Everything else makes the A7 a more superior product than the CLS350. But granted, the CLS350 is also a brilliant car. It will be more brilliant if it is the CLS400, which later on Mercedes came up with their own 3-liter turbocharged engine. But that was really late, right? So uh, between these two, A7. And the A7 is... I think they are more or less the same price, huh? Okay. Um, hi, Bobby. Thanks for addressing the RXA. Uh, I would like to get either an RXA. Oh my god! <sighs> I I really pity you guys, man, Singaporeans. What the hell? Okay. You know how in Malaysia the S2000 has gone through the roof in terms of used car values, right? Apparently Singapore hasn't. And uh, <laughs> oh my god, Singaporeans. I, I really pity you all, man. RX8, used car, 70,000 Sing dollar. Well, that's. <laughs> and then the S2000 is 110. Okay, 110, yeah. But the RX8, oh, you guys will, will be so pissed if, if, if we Malaysians tell you RX8 is about 15,000 Sing dollar here. <laughs> Go get it, bro. Join us for drives, huh? Alright. Hi, Bobby. I'm a salesperson. I average about 45,000 km a year. 
Uh, I'm currently driving a 2015 Proton Privet Turbo with 195,000 km on the clock. Uh, I love to drive windy roads. I love the stability the Privet has. Yes, it's a fantastic car. I'm saving up for a Subaru BRZ in a few years' time. Should I fix my Privet to its best condition or get another car for work purpose? If I'm, if I'm to get another car, my budget is about sixty to 80000 now, is your Privet broken or running to pieces? I would say don't spend too much money to rejuvenate your Privet because there's no point. Uh, I would suggest you to not buy a car now. Continue driving your Privet. Just leave it as your workhorse. And then you continue save up for your BRZ, then you can buy your BRZ later on. And sooner maybe, instead of buying another car, and then you delay your BRZ. So you can buy your BRZ sooner, and then you still drive, you still abuse your privé for your work. Alright? I think that is a better option because I don't see... Until the day after you got your BRZ, if your privé is really driven to the ground, by then, probably, your BRZ can be your workhorse, and then you can aim for another car, because the BRZ is, has a workhorse engine as well, right? It's a 2-liter boxer, all right? Um, hi, Bobby, have you heard of customized desktop? Yes, I've had, I'm just having fun with my video, sorry, <laughs> but it's fun clicking around. I want the most expensive stuff, I want the most expensive stuff, anyway, okay. Uh, hi Bobby, uh, Mr. Adam. Hi Bobby, I have a fifty to sixty thousand budget to get a car to drive to and from uni. I've shortlisted the Ford Fiesta, one liter EcoBoost, the MK Seven Golf, and a Kia Picanto GT. Picanto will be a new car, I said. I guess. Looking for reliability and fun to drive. Let's see. Hmm. There's another person answering on behalf, I mean they're discussing. Uh, he suggested an E90 LCI 325i and a Passat CC 2 litre uh, or an MK7 Golf TSI. Uh, I think the MK7 Golf TSI is perfectly alright. The reason is that its price point is because Volkswagens have bad resale value but doesn't mean this car uh, it's already old, like the E90 and all that. So I think you can go for the MK7 Golf TSI if you have shortlisted that, right? But of course, um, you might have fun with the 325i, but then you are a student, and then the 325i, but I'm sure, I mean, you came from a okay family, or maybe you have your own side income and all that. So, uh, yeah, mm. I think it's perfectly okay to get an MK7 Golf TSI. Um, yeah, yeah, go for it, 50,000, 60,000. Of course, the Kia Picanto is a nice car as well, but if you are feeling adventurous, you want to, uh, are you buying cash or buying loan, right? If you're buying cash, for you, I would suggest a Z4. You got a perfect, the perfect target that I mentioned. Because if, if your family can support you, or you have 50, 60,000 budget to buy a car, and um, you're buying cash, then you should get a Z4. Because after your uni, after you've got your first job, maybe that time you need to sell your car, you'll be able to sell your car at the same price that you bought it compared to the others would have depreciated a lot and uh, then your car would have been your sort of like an investment right but if you're getting a loan then then it's a different case lah. but if your if your family is reasonably well off um, you all can take the maintenance and all that it won't be too crazy you know but if you guys are okay with it financially alright comfortable I always suggest get a Z4 first you get girlfriends 
it's, it's really about it's really about your first car uh, not only serving you daily having fun with it don't crash lah huh? youngster don't crash lah don't drive too fast lah huh? don't drive too reckless and uh, after you came out the car will still be alright to serve you for your first job and all that and then when you need to sell it it retains your value because it's a cabriolet right it retains your value it's worth the, the it's worth the money that you put in to maintain its condition because it reserves its value right okay um Mr. Ryan, should I get a 2015 Hyundai Sonata or a brand new MyV? Both are 50,000. I'm concerned about the Sonata's reliability. I think mechanically the Sonata doesn't have any, but it's just that one guy mentioned uh, his dashboard cracked. So, um, uh, if you really want a reliable car, then you can buy a car that is two years older than the Sonata and get a Camry, right? And, um, yeah, Toyotas are indestructible. Camrys are indestructible, okay? Um, Mr. Najib, hi, Bobby. Do you think newer pickup trucks such as Triton or D-Max are suitable for 100% urban driving and comfortable as a family car? Uh, this is comparing to SUVs like X70 or XV. Uh, now, the modern pickup trucks has gotten a lot more comfortable. Between the two that you mentioned, Triton and D-Max, Triton is a lot more comfortable than the D-Max, a lot more sophisticated as well, but also a lot more expensive. Okay, um, But at the end of the day, they are still built on leather frame. Leather frame means you have two strong metal bars, right? literally and then uh, you have cross members here put it like that put an engine uh, the transmission the, 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 the long shaft and then you put a, a box on top the box can be a pickup the box can be an MPV so these are called leather frame cars right uh, these cars are more tahan lasa in a way but they bounce because of the, the leaf springs and all that they need to so they will never be as comfortable as a monocoque car. What is a monocoque car? A monocoque car is the whole thing is one shell and then the engine uh, fixes up here, you know, and then the wheels and all that goes in. So it's one unified body instead of a leather frame and a body on top. So uh, they will never be as comfortable as an X70 or Subaru XV, uh, provided Honda, Honda built a monocoque uh, pickup truck in US. The rich line or something all right but they are already a lot more comfortable and uh, with the accessories that allows you to cover the bed then they can be daily driven in fact a lot of people daily drive pickup trucks uh, look at thailand right they daily drive their pickup trucks pickup trucks are the bargain that people forgot okay if it weren't for tax-free all these tritons ford ranger hilux and all this right they should be the price of a 3 Series. I kid you not, you look at other markets, right? They should be at the price of a 3 Series. These cars are more expensive to build than Camrys and Accords and all that. It's just that in Malaysia, because they are tax-free, we have a notion to think that pickup trucks are cheap cars. No, in other countries, you are, you are rich, you buy a Hilux. You are slightly poorer, you buy a Camry. That's how it is. Pickup trucks are expensive. Okay. Uh, hi Bobby, I currently have a CRV and a Civic Turbo. I want to sell both cars, thinking of a CX-8 or a D-segment car. Uh, which D-segment would you recommend? No, you have a CRV. If you buy a D-segment, the, 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 the stuff that a D-segment can offer for you is not that different from a CRV. CRV is very spacious, front and rear. And then the boot, the boot, the D segment cannot find lah, huh? So in terms of utility, in terms of usage, family car usage and all that, the CRV will be more usable than a D segment. If you if you go to a D segment, it's somewhat like a little bit of a downgrade in terms of space, in terms of usability. Uh, I think what you mentioned CX eight is perfect because CX eight is like an extension of a CRV, except that you have more utility, the the extra third row, all right. 
Mr. Vino, I'm also plan planning to buy a 325 or 328 within 2016. There's no 325, right? Which would you suggest? I'm currently using a Civic FC. Um, of course, I would suggest a 328. Um, but, yeah, I would suggest a 328. I. Okay, F30. Uh, thank you, Bobby, for doing all this Q&A. Uh, Oh, I booked my FJ Cruiser and uh, my family car, the Panamera GTS, rarely used because we have a Ranger Raptor and a GLA 45, uh, one Mini, JCW and Toyota Alpha. Oh, you have a lot of cars, but you don't have a luxury car. You have a GLA 45 and a JCW and a Ranger Raptor and an Alpha and an FJ Cruiser now. Um, bro. I mean, since you guys are so well off, and um, to be honest, now selling any car, you're going to take up a lot of losses. Lah, huh? So, there's no choice. And it's a Panamera GTS. It's not like it's a 911 uh, GT, whatever, right? So, it's, it's entirely up to you, man. If you can take the loss, up to you. If you really don't need the car, but if you just, just park there, up to you. All right. Um, hi, Bobby. Do you think our country's road tax are too expensive? Hmm. I would say that our country's road tax is uh, imbalanced in a way. Um, think about it this way. Let's say you drive a Vios, right? A lot of people drive Vios cities and all that. The 1.5 liter cars, right? How much road tax do you all pay per year? 60, 70 ringgit. All right. um, and if you divide by 365 days, I'm sure you guys will argue, uh, hey, uh, we also pay excise duty, blah, 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 blah. Let's just strictly talk about road tax. All right. In one way, everybody wants to enjoy this uh, advantage of only paying 60, 70 ringgit of road tax per year. To drive your car uh, which is way less than what some of you youngsters will spend on bubble tea per week right but when there's road tax people make noise okay think about it this way in a way you want to complain that like this question Malaysia road tax is too expensive right because some people wants to buy let's say an M3 or an M5 or what you know big CC cars but then the road tax is always the prohibitive thing, and this actually, um, this actually <coughs> created the problem whereby it's not a problem, uh -huh, but it's a first world problem. No, it's not te technically a first world problem. It is slightly a problem, but not so obvious. It is the wiping out of wealth. What do I mean by wiping out of wealth? Let's say this is a house. This house is 500,000 ringgit. Okay? Economy is just like that. He bought it at 500,000 ringgit. How did he pay for his 5,000 ringgit? He worked, right? He worked day in and out, pay installment. The bank provides him a loan. He buys this house. Everybody wants this thing to sort of retain its value, right? 500,000 because after that, he can sell to another person. The bank can provide loan as well. The bank is happy to provide loan because this as a collateral protects the value. Okay, all right. Now cars, of course, cars depreciate, right? Because they are disposable. There are new cars coming out, blah, 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 blah. Think about it this way. Let's look at a 7 Series. No, not the current 7 Series. The older one, right? The older generation of Mercedes last time. These kind of car, what kind of engine are we talking about? 4.4 liter. Four, five liters, right? People buy them at one million, right? But because of the road tax, because of the road tax, this one million, very very quickly, became fifty thousand ringgit. It is the wipeout of wealth. Of course, the guy already paid for the car, right? But in technical terms, Malaysia paid for this car from Germany, right? Malaysia paid, Malaysia as a whole, paid Germany for 7 Series, paid Germany for Panamera, 
right, and all that, right? But because of the road tax, the high road tax, there is a speed up in the wiping out of its value that could have been um, could have been better if it did not, in a way, right? Because this thing is in Malaysia, in a way. Now, I've, I've veered too far. Let's talk back about uh, why people have this complaint. Yeah, Malaysia road tax is so expensive. You know, 6 litre, 15,000, 5 litre is 10,000, blah, blah, blah. Uh, wow. It's about imbalance. Because, let's put it this way, uh, my cars, like, like my Aston, I pay 15,000, right? 15,000 if you divide by 70 ringgit. That's like what? 200 years? Two, two, two. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Sorry, yeah, I can't compute now. <laughs> yeah. So, my one year road tax equals to a Vios paying for 214 years. So, do you think there is an imbalance here? Yes, of course. The, the reason for all these taxes is to tax those who can afford, right? It is a system to tax those who can afford to contribute more to the government, to contribute more to the collective funding for everybody, right? I, I accept that. I accept that part, right? It's my... Uh, I see it as a duty, right? I buy this car, yes, I pay a lot of road tax, but at the end of the day, the money goes back to... Let's say if we, if we treat Malaysia as a condominium, Right as a development, right? The government is our management committee, right? The money goes back to them, and if there are no corruption, this money is supposed to benefit Malaysians in a way. Okay, so I've suggested this in a previous video that I think that our road tax to have a balanced one should now. You may be driving a Vios now and you want your road tax to be cheaper or you celebrate if it is free. But one day, you also might want to own a Ferrari, let's say. Let's say, alright? One day, you want that as well. You can't have both ways, alright? You can't have both ways. In order for you to one day be able to buy a used car that you've been dreaming, but the value of the car doesn't, co doesn't correlate with the road tax at that time, you, you hope you can buy it, but you're not buying it because of the road tax. Or another person, let's say this man uh, retired when he was 50 years old. He retired with his beloved Mercedes-Benz S500, okay? That he has a lot of memories with his wife, his family and all that. He just cannot sell this car, all right? After he retired, he got older and older, and then his financial income became not as strong as last time, right? To him, this car is now worth 18,000, right? 20,000. Is it worth paying 10,000 ringgit road tax? Is it right to expect someone who is currently driving a car that is 15,000 to have a 10,000 ringgit road tax? In another word, if someone were to buy this car off him, right? I mean, the value of the car is no longer there, right? So what I mean is, uh, to have a more balanced way, I've already already suggested is our road tax should be 1% of our insured value. You see, road tax following displacement, there will be ir irregularities and people complain, you know. People complain, wow, drive Mercedes, 1.5 litre road tax, uh, 60 ringgit. See, you're not happy because you know that person is richer than you. You want him to pay more, Right? But his car is 1.5 litre because our road tax is following displacement. And then there's another thing, the BMW i8, 1.1 or 1.2 million. Guess what? 60 ringgit road tax. Do you feel imbalanced now? You feel imbalanced, right? But you're like, ah. Right. So what if the road tax of our cars follows our insured value? 1% of insured value would be our road tax. I think that would be a more fair uh, proposition because if you if you buy a used uh, Vios now, right? You bought the two thousand four two thousand five Vios. Let's say it's eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand one percent is how much? Hundred eighty ringgit. You're like, what the hell? I still pay hundred ringgit, hundred eighty ringgit for this. Uh, last time only sixty ringgit, right? But it's an annual road tax. 
next year when your car is worth 12,000, it will be 120, right? When your car is worth 8,000 ringgit, it will be 80 ringgit. Isn't it fair to pay 80 ringgit to drive your car a year, right? Now, this has benefits because by the time you're ready to buy, let's say, your dream car, the BMW M5, 5 liter V10, how much is it now? 60,000. 60,000 ringgit car, you want to pursue your passion, right? And you can buy the car at 60,000. How much is the road tax? 600 ringgit. Isn't it fair? It's fair. And some people will say, why can't it be based on asking price? No, cannot. Because if I were to, if I own a car, 50,000, I can sell to you at 10,000. But will you insure the car at 10,000? You know you got a deal, right? But that car, you know what it's worth. You want to insure more. So it should follow your insured value. That's what I think, right? Someone buy a million, someone, if someone bought a million ringgit car, 10,000, yes. Uh, what if they bought a 5 million ringgit car? 50,000. Fair. In a way. Right? So that's my, my own opinion. I, I think the more fair system will be 1% of the insured value. Sorry, too long <laughs> for one simple question. Um, Mr. David. Hi, Bobby. May I know what are your thoughts on a 2010 370Z? Ooh, is it worth buying over an 86? Ooh. Hey, I like this guy, man. I am prodigy. If you can tahan the road tax, 370Z is the way to go. Yes, I, I do agree as well. Uh, if you're already considered about the road tax and all that, right? Uh, 370Z, 3.7. 3.7 road tax should be somewhere 6,000 or 7,000 ringgit. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic car. It sounds great. Uh, it is an underrated car. Yeah. In a way, it is the 86 that everybody wanted, right? Everybody wanted a more powerful 86. <laughs> anyway, hi Bobby, what do you think of a 2013-14 Mazda 3 hatchback? The one which is the final gen of Mazda Speed or uh, Mazda 6 2.5? Surprisingly, the 6 is lower priced than the 3. Mm, yeah, yeah, because the 3, more people like it. Yes, I think the Mazda 3 is a fantastic car. Uh, it's still very good looking in a way. Uh, my brother had it, right? It's a lovely car. Um, very hard dashboard though. That's what I recall. The whole dashboard is hard plastic. Yeah, it's a lovely car. It is a lovely car. It feels more spacious than the six than the Mazda Six you mentioned. Maybe that was an older generation Mazda product. Yeah, go ahead. I think it should be about what forty thousand ringgit. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Bobby. What's the brand of your TV? It's an LG. It's an LG. LG Smart TV. Um, let's see. Hi, Bobby. I bought an A7 3 liter TFSI. I have some coolant level low and then I refill and it's low again. Um, previous owner said he repaired the pipes. Should I bring it to Audi Satya Alam? You can bring it to Audi Satya Alam because those guys are honest, transparent, really nice, very detailed, okay? But one thing to check, uh, when you move your car, are there any stains on the floor? And what color they are? You can do some research. And your coolant piping may be new, but what about your reservoir? The reservoir is plastic, and sometimes plastic might crack, all right? And uh, your radiator, maybe there are stones that puncture it. So, but this is a small issue. It's easy to fix, and it won't cost you too much to fix it, all right? Pravin? Great A7 you have there. Um, hi Bobby, how do you pay for your cars? I work. If you look at my videos, look at my description. We, we run multiple websites. We run our Facebook page, Horizon Malaysia. Uh, we are a media company in a way. All right. Um, no, YouTube can't pay for all this. All right. Um, and there's another thing called um, when. You, how do I put this? See, I. I I'm already close to 40. I've worked my years, right? So, when you have your other cars that you've been paying like this, and then when you change, you want something else that is roughly this price point, and, and you do that, you're just doing that, right? As long as the bank is okay to offer you the loan and all that. So, nothing special. I mean, I didn't buy my cars new, right? Um, yeah. 
I mean, if a bank can approve, a, let's say, if the bank can approve a four hundred thousand loan to you to buy a car, uh, they can approve five hundred k. It's 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 more or less that, right? So, yeah, I mean, I just work hard. That's it. Okay. Um, <sighs> A lot of a PC. Hi, but we, I'm the one who asked for the Elantra three weeks ago, 2018 Elantra. You asked me to go for a 2015 3 Series. Thanks for answering my question. What about an older 328i? The older is not LCI. How do I balance between LCI? Blah, blah, blah. Just get the LCI. Why? Um, you can tune the 320i to 260, 270 horsepower. No problem. The engine can take it. All right. Uh, I'm also looking at a 2014 1.8 TFSI Audi or a 2 liter Quattro. It's alright, but have you considered an A5 Sportback if that's the case? Mm, I, I always think for the B8 generation, B8 means the previous generation A4, from 2008 to 2015, this is the B8 generation, B8 and B8.5. I think the A5 Sportback is a more superior product than the A4. Provided you're a wagon lover like me, all right. Uh, but they don't drive as well as F thirty, but they have their merits. Yeah, beautiful interior, uh, solidly built, very little ele electronic problems, uh, lovely cars. Okay. Hi Bobby, should I buy the new Lexus RX, the XC ninety or the CX nine? What's your thought on the right quality and comfort? Now, if you are, if you can afford all three, you should automatically go for the XC90. Why? Because this car were if were if not for tax free, this car is seven hundred fifty thousand ringgit. It is a full spec, higher spec car that is at the same price point as a Range Rover Sport, right? Your Lexus RX is a tax product. Your CX9 is a tax product. This is a tax-free product, and it's at this price point. If not, it is a seven hundred fifty thousand ringgit car, right? Uh, and it's a superior car, uh, more, more spacious, better spec, safety, sound sound system. That sound system in the Volvo, the Bowers and Wilkins sound system in the Volvo. I've never sat in another car with stock sound system that sounds better than it. Have it I haven't. Not a Bentley, not a Rolls Royce, not a Lexus, nothing. Nada. Okay. Uh, hi, Bobby. I'm due to an upgrade. C43 or 630i. Ooh, very different propositions. C43 is a rocket ship, 630i is a spaceship. <laughs> How do I come up with this? Uh, what car are you driving now, Steve? That would give me a better idea of, you know, if current if, if you tell me that, oh, apparently I drive a C300, then I will ask you to buy a 6 Series GT, right? Um, somewhat unfair comparison, bro, I'm just having fun with a configurator in Illigear, okay? <laughs> Don't catch on me. Uh, Oh, that's a very long answer. I can't answer this now. Like, it's, you know, he asked, Bobby, what are some of the cars you wish to see around in 20 years? Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's too, it's too, too broad an answer. Yeah. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, gaming rig, yada yada. Hi, Bobby, I have a Tiana 3.5. Seriously. You want to supercharge your car? Um, is it a good decision? Um, I don't think your engine will have any issue tackling your supercharger, but your CVT gearbox. <laughs> yeah, I don't think your CVT gearbox can take it. Huh? Um, hi, Bobby. I'm looking for a daily drive car, 40,000 budget. Prefer a hatchback. Suprema S. Suprema has 40,000, meh. Cannot be, right? It's, it's, it's not an expensive car to begin with. Yeah, 
20 plus to 30 plus yeah 20 plus to 30 plus let me just off the hook let me try this oh, this is still very expensive huh now I was trying to search the Mazda 3 MPS Two thousand nine. Get a two thousand nine or two thousand ten Mini Cooper. Yep, forty plus fifty. Ah, uh -huh. it's a lovely car, lovely, lovely car. I don't have much issues with my car except that there's a lot of plastic bits falling in the car. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Suprema, is, there's, there's, there's no issue with a Suprema S. It's just that I felt that if your budget is 40000 to get a car, buying it, buying a Suprema S at this budget will be overpaying in a way because uh, I would say the car is at least 5 years old and uh, the, the original price is 80000 It's a Proton. It's not a very popular model to sell. A used one at forty thousand is rather high to buy at that price. You don't, you don't get to enjoy that kind of buying a used car kind of bargain feel. You get what I mean? Uh, you don't because the the primary primary reason we buy used cars is our our affordability is let's say this segment of cars, right? That's our affordability, and then we buy. We are willing to buy used because we want to grab something from a higher segment yeah that's the primary reason but if you grab something from the same segment then you, right okay uh, blah 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 sorry these are all the laptops huh? <clears throat> okay Mr. Ivan, hi Bobby, I'm planning to get a high performance sedan SUV, budget below 200,000. Mm -hmm. I have the 2010 X6M, I know which one you're talking about. 2010 Panamera Turbo, used to be my dream car. 2012 CLS 63 AMG, now we're talking. And a 2010 Cayenne Turbo, 2010 is which one? Oh, is it the transition era? Is it? Oh, it's already this generation. All right. Which one to go? Ooh. Okay, uh, Mr. Ivan. Mm. Out of these four cars that you mentioned, right? Um, only one car will stop depreciating. And then there is a chance of it slightly going up in the future. Not the Panamera Turbo, not the Cayenne Turbo, not the X6M. It is the CLS 63, the 2012 CLS 63. All right, uh, this car is special, 5.8, 5.5 liter bi-turbo AMG. Whereas the Panamera Turbo, yes, the Panamera Turbo is more spacious than the CLS. It is uh, way better to drive, but in a way, the Panamera Turbo and the Cayenne Turbo of this generation, right? People only see it as a. They only see it as Camry two liter versus Camry two point four. They don't see the Panamera Turbo as a performance division product, right? Whereas the CLS AMG, like uh, M five or M six, these are. Sorry, I had beer just now. <clears throat> These are cars from the performance division. And they mean different things to car guys. And uh, further down the road, it will be something worth... It will become a cult performance classic sort of thing. Whereas the Panamera Turbo will just end up like a like a Bentley Continental Flying Spur. You know, what? W12 6 liter twin turbo? Wow, but nobody cares. Yeah, nobody cares. Uh, X six M is a bit bit of a unique proposition. Uh, it's an SUV. Is people don't see it as a real M car. That's a problem. Yeah, even though it carries an M badge, it has the same engine from the M five, but it's not like 
BMW massively lowered the car with a white body haunch with a wing on top you know with crazy stuff like these that makes it a proper skunk works kind of car like the GLA 45 so again the SXM is again seen as a ooh ooh you're damn rich you bought the most expensive X6 alright and in a way also even though it has this engine um is you won't feel as special as the CLS 63 MG now. so I, I, I made all this trouble because I believe from what you mentioned you want a performance sedan or SUV you just want something to be a little bit gila right but between the Cayenne Turbo and the XXM this is the struggle I cannot deny Porsche's interior. It is so beautiful, especially this generation Panamera and Cayenne. To me, it's prettier than the current one. All right. So, uh, um, oh, oh, I don't know, man. I would hope you get the CLS sixty three because it's just baller, man. It it is baller, and it sounds amazing you know not the Cayenne Turbo not the Panamera Turbo yeah get the CLS maybe one day you can buy the Cayenne Turbo for 58,000 alright okay Bobby I don't believe your MacBook is 1.5 years old uh, I've been using my MacBook 2013 for 7 years and it works smoother than your laptop all your joking say well, I have an even older MacBook Air that is working fine, right? Now, I bought this back in either late 2017 or early 2018. That time, my older MacBook is so old, so heavy, and the hard disk is full. I need another Mac laptop that is that has a larger hard disk so that I can transfer everything over, that I, I still have space to do my new work and all that. And... Uh, I hated the the USB C MacBook Pro with the touch bar because that doesn't fit my usage. I want an SD card reader, I want USB ports. And the only way I can buy this is through the student section. Somehow, somehow, I forgot where I read it, right? Somehow Apple still have some remaining stocks of this uh two thousand fifteen generation Retina MacBook. MacBook Pro in their students program. I can't buy it from the official website. The only way I can buy this is click that, don't know what link, go into student program, which normally they would discount two, three hundred ringgit. And uh, it's only there that I can buy this. So no choice, I bought it from there. And uh, I thought I made a fantastic deal in a way. But at the end, right, when you select this, this laptop, right, you, you pick the processors, you pick the one terabyte hard disk, it still ends up 15,000. And then it went bloated. Slow as hell. Anyway. Uh, but it's still a Mac, lah, huh? Uh, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> Hi, Bobby. Cayenne diesel or 3.6 petrol? I'm not so confident with the 2012 Cayenne diesel engine's uh, reliability, mainly because I heard a lot of reliability issues with the 3-litre diesel Q7. Even though Porsche would say, oh no, they are not the same engines. They are, lah, huh? under the same group. Lah, huh? uh, if you want reliability, 3.6 petrol. That is a very old engine from the Volkswagen group and it's reliable all right not very powerful but it's decent but it's reliable okay uh, blah 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 these are all laptop talks laptop talks laptop talks uh, hi Bobby I have a 2015 Sonata and my dashboard cracked should I negotiate with Hyundai to offer a replacement? If your car is 2015, you are either running out of warranty soon or you have already run out of warranty. Uh, speed up your process because if you want to claim warranty, 
then uh, if it is if your car is still a few months away from from not from 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 your warranty expiry then you should you should go and file a claim with Hyundai right uh, if you just finish your warranty just over then I believe there's very little thing you can do because it's five years it's legit wear and tear and uh, I mean who knows maybe you park a car under the sun or your previous owner parked a car under the sun all the time maybe so uh, yeah okay um, Blah 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 blah. <laughs> These are some people are too serious now. Nah. Come on. I find it funny because I bought a laptop. Everybody say uh, desktops are cheaper. Why don't you buy desktop? Then you know people like to do that. Why well, you buy a laptop for what? You could have bought a desktop. Okay, oh, now I got a desktop. I mean, since I full spec my laptop, I full spec a desktop lah. Just just to pull their legs lah, huh? <laughs> um, Blah. Hi Bobby, uh, Mr. Vincent, I'm looking for an SUV. I want NVH Comfort Ventilated Seats. Power and handling are all important. Lexus RX, Volvo XC90 or Range Rover Velar. Or should I just wait for the X5? Now, historically speaking of the cars that you mentioned, the ones that always spec ventilated seats are Lexus. Right? I, 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 I can't say this enough. Uh, as a Malaysian, I think ventilated seats is more important than heads up display. And heads up display is more important than. Should I say this? Radar cruise control. <laughs> radar cruise control is fantastic when you drive on the highway or traffic jam. No, okay, la. the least important one is, is heads up display. La, okay, I want ventilated seats more than heads up display. Now, out of the cars that you mentioned, I personally would really, really want you to buy the Range Rover Velar because it's just so, so beautiful. But to be fair, you should wait for the X5 Hybrid. We do not know what kind of pricing that BMW might end up with and what kind of specs they were talking about. But why I ask you to wait? Because it is the newest generation product. Simple as that. Okay. Um... Blah, 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 blah. Laptop, laptop, laptop. Arguing specs la, and all that. <laughs> Hi, Bobby. Which is more spacious? CX-30 or XV? I think it's the CX-30. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, I like the design of the Skyline. Ooh, you're a man of taste, Mr. Neo. I like the Nissan Skyline 2006 to 2014. Mm, beautiful car. Beautiful car. Uh, as a second car, Please comment on the car's parts availability. There are no parts. No. It's not that you can't get, you just have to order. Alright? I don't think we all should worry about parts anymore for... Because it's a matter of just ordering and then pay and then they'll ship in and then you have your parts. Provided your car is some low-end uh, car that that is already very old, and nobody bothers to manufacture the parts. You know, cars that no collector, no cult following, and all that, like, like, a, like a, let's say you have a 1997 Renault Scenic MPV. Who the fuck cares about producing parts for your car anymore, right? Then it's very hard to find. But Nissan Skyline 250 GT, there's a cult following in Japan. Uh, there are car groups and all that. Definitely there are parts in Japan. All you need to do is just to order from those parts supplier, okay? One of our Evo Club member, uh, Eugene, he runs JDM Auto Link. I'm sure you can order anything for you, all right? Get the car. It's worth buying. If I'm not wrong, it's like 40000 It's a beautiful car, all right? Uh, hi, Bobby. Thanks for sharing. I bought my Honda City Hybrid after I watched your car review. I think in the car review, I mentioned don't buy the hybrid, buy the normal one, right? <laughs> okay, currently I'm looking for a Volkswagen Passat CC or an Audi A5 Sportback or a Mazda 6. Hmm, you want something fun, huh? You want some obvious upgrade? Get the A5 Sportback. Yeah, 2013 facelifted one, get the A5 Sportback. It should be fun. 
Alright. Uh, hi Bobby, how big is your house? My house, uh, inside is about 1,000, close to 1,008 square foot. Outside is about 600, so I get 2,400. Alright. Peter, oh, just a statement. I read an interview where a BMW designer said that his favourite designs are from Volvo. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Alright. Uh, hmm. Most are talking about laptops or my desktop. Okay, hi Bobby, I'm 30 years old, married, no kids yet. I drive a Honda City now. Previously, I drive a Kanchil and Myvi. I'm thinking to upgrade a car with better handling. Honda. See, people drive City, want better handling. <laughs> Learn from Proton. Okay, uh, my first choice is a 2016 Mazda 3 sedan Sky Active. My second choice is a 2015 F thirty three twenty I. Now we're talking. How's the difference in handling for both of these cars? Price gap twenty thousand, which is more worthwhile. The Mazda three has a better interior, advanced safety features. Three twenty I has more power, rear wheel drive. Hmm. You're correct. Um. I would say in day to day driving, the Mazda three Sky Active, the two thousand sixteen one. Uh, the safety features is uh, nice to have. Uh, it drives, obviously it drives better than the Honda City. Mm. But, are you sure? Oh, 2015. Wait, I should go Buddha. Okay. Thereabouts. Yep, yep, yep. Um, if you ask me, I will go with the BMW because it has an engine that. Okay, put it this way. Okay, you've driven a country, you've driven a MyV, you've driven your Honda City since 2014, it's six years now, it's time to change your car. Uh, if it is the Mazda 3, it is a small upgrade from the Honda City. Why? Because your Honda City has a more spacious rear seat than the Mazda 3. I kid you not. Okay, You also have maybe a larger boot as well. So the Mazda 3 will be a small incremental upgrade. Yes, it handles better, but it's still a 2-liter NA engine at the end of the day. All right? But if you go into the BMW, the F thirty three twenty i, the rear seats are way more spacious than the Mazda three, and uh, you have a large boot as well, and then you have the power, you have i drive, you have the eight speed transmission, things that will make you feel wow, it's worth waking up every morning, work hard, you know, get the F thirty, and after two years of driving it. Uh, if you got bored of it, you can tune your car. You can you can go stage one, two hundred twenty horsepower, right? Two hundred thirty horsepower. Stage two, two hundred fifty, two hundred sixty horsepower. There's more things to play with. Yeah, get the three series. All right. Um, blah 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 blah. Sorry. Hmm. Hi Bobby, should I get a Volvo S60 T8 or a Maserati Ghibli? Which is a better buy? Oh. The Volvo is a better built car, more comfortable. Uh, of course it's brand new. Um, it's fast. But the Ghibli has sound. It has the Maserati sound. Nobody would shoot you if you go for the Maserati. Because at the end of the day, it is a Maserati. Right? Um, let's say if you bought a Volvo, a few years down the road, your Volvo is in the workshop. Versus your Maserati is in the workshop. You know, Maserati, you yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
actually if you have this kind of thought right I believe it's the case of heart over brain your brain is telling you to get the Volvo S60 T8 because on every measurable uh, context it is the one that you should go for whereas your heart is like fuck man Maserati within my affordability should I? should I? you know in fact do you know what the Ghibli is the same price as the Quattro Porte the Quattro Porte is way more luxurious than the S60 yeah and imagine this hey bro what car you drive ah? oh Maserati and wait wait until you go Quattro Porte alright I don't know man usually I would suggest the more sensible one but in this case you look like a cool guy Vignes Warren and you ask about Maserati. Oof. Maserati, bro. Get the Maserati. But the S60 T8 is the one you should be getting. You know, right brain, no, left brain. You should, you should, you should. Like, you should stay in class. Don't ponting, right? You should drive at 110, even though every Malaysian is going 160 you should right you shouldn't have a girlfriend in school right you shouldn't put your hands into her no okay <laughs> i'll continue this <laughs> uh, mr dylan hi bobby i've been driving the cx5 for two years i love the car but now i have another kid i'm thinking of getting the cx8 For a father, for a family man with two kids, maybe a, a helper or something, the CX-8 is perfect. But the problem is, under my, my, my thinking process, my thought logic, you have a 2018 CX-5, which is the current CX-5, which is the car they used to lengthen to create the CX-8. Would you feel that after you sell your car so quick in two years, you make your losses, maybe you will lose 40000 and then you buy a CX-8, will you feel like you are still in the same car and then suddenly 40000 gone when you're not using your two rear seats? This situation might occur one day further down the road. You'll be like, fuck man, what did I do? So can you go for the CX-9 instead? It's a way more substantial car. It's a beautiful car. It feels like a proper heavyweight luxury car. It's even quieter than the XC90. It has two rear, uh, the third row as well. Yeah, get the CX9. Maybe a slightly used one or a pre rack or something. Okay. Uh, Mr. Zaid. Hi, Bobby. I'm looking for an SUV as a daily driver. 2013 Q5, 2014 XC60, 2014 X3 LCI. Um, Volvo has the most power, yes. I think, I. is it fun to drive as a Q5 or X3? No, this generation XC60 is not fun to drive. It's very safe to drive. It's, it's okay on the highway and all that, but it's not the kind of carvers like a Q5 or an X3. Uh, in fact, for this generation, I think the Q5 handles slightly better than the X3, in a way. But your X3, the one you mentioned, is the LCI one, which has the more advanced uh, iDrive system. And uh, in terms of infotainment system, the Q5 really feels its age, 2013. And the XC60's infotainment system will just make you pull your hair out. It is so infuriating to use it, you know. It's, it's like an iPod menu. Uh, you, you, you turn one dial up and down, then you enter and it goes in and all that. But the problem is not the interface. The interface is perfect. It's just like an iPod. The problem is the, the, the buttons that were there that wasn't supposed to be designed to handle that was forced to handle that. So you have weird things controlling a very logical thing. Yeah. So uh, I think you can either go for the X3 which looks nice, the LCI, and the Q5 still looks modern until this. I mean, 
next to the Q5, the X3 is ugly. La, huh? Even next to the X360, that X3 is ugly. But it's a larger car. It is the largest car amongst the three. Uh, it still has BMW's iDrive. It has BMW's 8-speed ZF. So it's still a very compelling choice. You said the design is just off. All right. <coughs> oh, my throat is drying up. Uh, hi, Bobby. Ferrari F430 4.8, 4.3 Spider or a Maserati Gran Turismo 4.7. Bro, bro, don't, don't, don't ever tell people that you gave up a Ferrari for a Maserati. No, no, no. You, in every circumstance, you asking this question means you have about 280, 290, let's say 300,000 cash to spend on a car. And uh, Mr. Revan, please go for the Ferrari F430. Alright, the Spider, some more, drop top, instead of the Gran Turismo 4.7 liter. Um, yes, the Maserati Gran Turismo is big, luxurious, beautiful, four-seater, right? And it screams as well, the engine. Uh, but a Ferrari is a Ferrari, you know? F430, 4.3 Spider V8, the sound. And not only the sound, let's say you buy them at 300 or 280k now, right? Your Gran Turismo will continue to depreciate until it's about 150, maybe, one day. Whereas your Ferrari F430, you can buy it now at about... Because I, what I really know that currently the F430 prices are the lowest, okay? So you can buy your car and drive it, your, your F430, and drive it for 4 years, 5 years, you can still sell it at the same price, or it may even appreciate. Especially yours is a spider. Alright, please get the F430 in this context. Okay, I've done my Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, I've done more than 1,000 videos in the past 3 years. And uh, if you're interested to know any car reviews and all that, to us and then if you saw our beginning and ending of our video which is our intro to our evil club do sign up club.evomalaysia.com um, our goal is to help people buy cars don't buy the wrong cars and of course we we, we, we basically is car ownership you know that's what we want to nurture and I'll try my best to help you all when you have a car buying advice needed and uh, yeah thank you for watching and if you haven't liked our Facebook if you notice us, yes, my YouTube channel is called Bobby Ang, but under my description are all my colleagues, okay? We, we operate very differently. All of us have our own channels, and all of us, uh, we team up as Team Horizon. So you can go to Facebook, you can see a link there, Horizon Malaysia is our Facebook page. And uh, we have our other titles, we are on Instagram, we are on TikTok, and follow us. Thank you. Good night.